welcome to another episode of the Best Book Club. I'm your host, New Fatora, and this is the podcast where I discuss the best stories with the best minds in the community. On this episode, I'll be discussing monetization in the community. With me, I have Hans Gutherson, Shadow Melder, and JCCW. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so glad to be chatting again. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very nice to have Shadow on for uh, his first non-novel uh, episode. So to start this oh, conversation, congrats. I'm uh, I'm curious about your guys' experience with it, whether that's as a creator or a consumer. Yeah. So, so the purchasing and monetizing of of content. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Very briefly, I guess I I can start by saying. Um, yeah, it's something I've, I've sort of looked at in a few different ways. I mean, I've gotten, you know, videos that you've had to pay for and like clips for sale and things. And then, uh, a few commissions that I've bought as well, um, as well as done it for art, uh, as well, commissioning art and stories. So I've done that. And then on the other side of it, I've only in the last couple years started charging for content in any kind of consistent um and kind of formulaic way in terms of like the patreon i ran with ap and now with uh shadow melder and uh, aurora protocol the novel so yeah there's a a lot we can talk about but it's something we're seeing a lot more creators do in terms of different models they're trying a lot of and da is making it easier to do this which is something we can probably talk about too um with subscriptions and patreons taking off you know um and even the many different types of content we're seeing being created uh the amount of time some of those take like animations and things like that they uh, lend themselves naturally to charging for them so uh yeah a lot to talk about but i'm excited to dig into it for sure uh what about uh i guess we'll go we'll move to you shadow oh uh well in terms of experience i've had Yeah, I've just commissioned art, and I've been commissioned for writing. Uh, I had a very briefly a Patreon, and I, you know, did this novel with Hans that we monetized. Uh, but I think that's about it uh, in terms of experience with monetization. Very nice. What about you, JC? Um, I am definitely more on the consumerist side of this. I have not tried uh, to monetize any of my work. I've only consumed what other people have been monetizing. And in my experience in that department, um, it seems to be most successful um, for... Uh, it, it seems to be most successful for one person in, in particular, JR. His Patreon has easily been the most successful monetization in the entire Wedgie community. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, it also seems to be very successful for um, our great our great writers, uh, Hans Gutherson and Shadow. Um, all their all the stuff that they've all the stuff that they've done has has been very successful, and their new book um, is also, I am assuming. Has has it been pretty successful, guys? It has, yes. Nice. <laughs> like I think it worked, and it works for them. Um, mon- monetization in um the the one spot where I think monetization in the community is really hard um to convey how successful it how to quantify how successful it is is probably the uh, small wedgie video creator. Um. People who come, uh, people who come in, try to make some uh, small form content and sell it. Um, those are the people who have the hardest time in the community to sell. I find, um, and there are many reasons to explain that. We could probably get into that later. Um, overall, uh, monetization in the community is a very wishy washy uh, sort of thing. Either you're very successful, or you're gonna die in three months. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is an interesting um, back and forth, I suppose. And I'm right there with you, JC. I, I've never monetized any of my content, so um, 
on all on purely the consumer side uh, but yeah purchasing uh, videos on whatever websites there are and then uh, like the patreons as you said the jr's patreon is probably the biggest example of, the, of a successful monetization but, but yeah i mean we have things like between two cheeks patreon before they left um i don't know if bloom ever monetized their content but uh do we have that from commissions now she did yeah. commissions and then had that kind of interesting exclusive deal with between two cheeks obviously which is 90 percent of the reason that patreon was as successful as it was oh 100 <laughs> percent yeah uh i mean i think people enjoy the stories as well but yeah um uh what's the, what's the one um uh what i can't remember what the thing is but the i'm curious Especially like since it's taken you so long, Hans, to start monetizing your content, and um, I think at least JC and Shadow, you guys have Shadow. You sounds like you you've started to um, more um, sort of monetize in a general sense, as opposed to like doing specific things uh, like with commissions and whatnot. And JC, you absolutely could get start doing it with the, with the audience you have but the, uh, i'm wondering is there really ever a correct or right time to start monetizing yeah that's a good question i think in a broad general sense nowadays is probably the best time to, for a creator to start as compared to maybe three or four or five years ago where monetization wasn't as maybe proven um, as successful for creatives. We didn't have JR's Patreon, which if my math is any good, they make like 25 grand a month. Yeah. Looking at how many patrons they have, um, which is obviously massive. And we saw on much smaller scales, you know, the success I had with AP on my Patreon, which off the top of my head, roughly, I mean, I th we made hundreds of dollars off of that, I think, in the couple months we ran it, so a number of hundreds of dollars. So, And that was good. But uh, for me, I know there was a lot of worry about it. I'm also pretty financially illiterate, which I think is kind of what a lot of people face. It's kind of just like a issue um, in general. Um but if you're looking at monetization, I mean, there's so many examples and models out there that you can look to, as well as a consumer demand and interest for to pay for content. It's no longer a case, I think, where people are reluctant uh, to buy content. Um, you know, e-commerce online is so easy nowadays, and our community is getting older as well. We have a lot of people who you have to think probably have access to disposable income so are interested in, in buying this content and if they like what you're doing it seems at least shadow and i's experience now with aurora protocol our latest novel uh they're going to pay for it uh, even if in our case we tell them hey it's also going to be available for free online people still want to have it uh they still will pay for exclusive pieces of content that are a part of it um, as well as just to get it in a in a format that they prefer, which is all at once in like a PDF, you know, so you don't have to go looking through all the links and things like that, you know, so ease um, of access as well as, you know, having some some bonuses. I think knowing what people like helps, but if you're going to start monetizing, there's no better time than than now, I would say. But I don't know what does everybody else think. I think it probably depends more on the art form that you're going for um, with deciding whether or not you're going to monetize or not. Um, I think writers have an amazing uh, opportunity right now to start getting big because there's sort of a there's sort of a void of great writers coming out right now. Um, so get so if you're an up and coming uh, wedgie writer and you want to get into this, this is the best time uh, for you to try and raise your audience and then start monetizing it because you're going to attract a lot of the great a lot of great attention. Um, I think for um, professional videos similar to Jr, if you want to be sort of like that, 
Um, there we've got a few uh, people right now who are sort of like um, at getting like getting porn stars to come to come on do wedgie stuff um, and sort of establish themselves like that. Um, but we don't have too many, so that would be a pretty decent um, avenue to sort of go to go down. Um, if you're just a normal, co uh, if you're just a normal guy with a girlfriend, and you think you can make some wedgie content stuff, um, I would I would highly recommend uh, not, <laughs> not to be like too blunt or anything like that. It's just that um, that type of content is the type of content that when I say dies out in three months, that actually dies out in three months. So I would, so before you go ahead and do that, you have to determine whether or not that's actually going to be long-term or if you need to decide this is short-term, we're not doing this forever. Like this, this is not, not a genuine market. Like this, this, you cannot monetize this forever because you will be burned out. You will have people coming up and asking you for free content or it's going to get way too much. Whatever the answer, whatever the reason may be, you're going to die out in three months. So you got to make that decision whether or not you're going to stay only that three months or not make content at all. I'm intrigued by, you know, this independent versus studio, I guess we could call them, you know, video creation, which is a total different beast. And we could talk probably forever about that sort of thing. But I just wanted to sort of add on to what JCCW was saying and to, to the idea of like, yeah, I mean, YouTube has shown us in some ways, you know, that you can make content and, and get money for it. And now there's that expectation. So when we look at like video creation, I can think of like trying to get on clips for sale, for example. And if you're an independent creator, I know clips for sale takes a portion of each sale you make, which is why some creators like JR moved away from it. Um, plus, you probably have more control over, you know, what you're platform looks like and being able to interact with your audience and things and find out what they like which you can't do on clips for sales so it's like this this movement which is interesting too in terms of you know better engagement with your audience leading to more monetization and more sales i guess just generally but yeah when you're an independent creator it's like you have to realize it's going to be quite the grind you know to manage money coming in and out if you're doing a lot of commissions or if you're on clips for sale you have to be making enough profit to sort of justify what uh you know the the clips for sale platform or whatever platform you're using is taking from you and then yeah i mean the thing with many studios is they're putting out tons of videos probably lower budget but they're probably making a bunch of the time and they're also probably also catering to other fetishes and they in some cases, have been around for many, many years, building a big audience. So I certainly can see, you know, independent creators coming out. Um, be very difficult to break out on a place like Clips for Sale, where there's, what is it, like thousands of, of studios or something and, and hundreds and hundreds of clips, you know. Um, so that would be very difficult. And then, yeah, if you like, for example, do try and make free content online, um, it might be difficult to try and monetize but yeah i just want to throw that in there because the independent versus studio creators is such a different beast altogether absolutely and i do want to yeah. do want to add real quick that the on on i, I guess i want to add on to the add-on um that uh, I, it seems as far as i've heard that, that clips for like clips for sale and places like that take a pretty big portion like 40 percent of the of the revenue or what something like that and other platforms take a much lesser cut so um I, that's that's a major determining factor it seems like in the platforms that people go to yeah with so many options certainly what you're going to look at and shadow and i had this experience is figuring out what can we you know afford to give to a platform you know, because we knew there'd be some costs around that. So for people wondering about monetization, that's one of your biggest uh, things you got to think about because, yeah, you're going to be um, in some cases, you know, you're going to be spending money to make money um, you, unless you're kind of writing or you're making art. And there's a very low cost to that other than your time, technically speaking, you know, and things um, or the back and forth with your clients, etc. But for things like, you know, making a video, I mean, that's major costs involved, and that's why the returns can be 
higher and, and you can charge more for it generally and things. But uh, what you can charge is also kind of interesting to think about too because that can vary. But uh, yeah, no, uh, definitely the, one of the first things you got to think about is how much you're willing to give up to a platform and why kind of thing, if that makes sense. Absolutely, for sure. And uh, Shadow, what were you going to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say before, since we seem to be going too deep into it, I think one of the things that has been missing from the conversation, besides the, you know, studio versus independent creator thing that you were mentioning, even a step below that is the whole thing about are you doing this like in the professional way, like as a mm -hmm. professional or as a hobby? Just yeah. because there's a difference in terms of are you expecting to make a full living out of this uh, mm -hmm. monetization or is this more of a side gig or even just a um, bonus money you make along the way? Because that's going to change a lot of expectations. And when you, for example, when JCCW mentions like creators, like small video creators getting burned out. I mean, I don't have much experience in terms of monetization on that end, but as a consumer, I have seen that sometimes it's it's the case of people who, for one reason or another, they stumble into this community or this market, and they see that this thing is popular and can make money, and they get into it, and they want to, like, you know, get some of that because, you know, they, they like making this content, and then, obviously, they would like the money, but they they get into this weird moment where they got to decide like, is this just a, a hobby we're doing or do we want to go full uh, professional model into this? And, you know, going full professional model requires a lot of, like you mentioned, grinding, a lot of work and a lot of mm -hmm. uh, dedication. And that's why people get burned out. I mean, at least I, I can relate to that in terms of from the writing side. Uh, so I imagine it's something similar-ish in the video creation side where like if you want to do a full professional path into this creation, you, you got to commit much more than if you were doing this as a hobby. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, I'm, and I mean, I think of like small-time creators like Dio and Koi Kink and things like that where they seem to be doing decently well like they don't seem to be going anywhere um and yeah i mean it's 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 really it's really re it's really interesting this i guess that's to see that really fa that's a really fascinating one is in cases like the in cases like those two because yeah those those two are doing those two are doing big stuff um the day we're recording this dio just released his uh zelda video which Maybe one of the first porn videos that actually has decent acting in it. Really? Um, yeah, le yeah, legitimately. Wow. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, but I find it, but I find um, Dio and Koi very fascinating as they are like the prime targets to be burnt out after three months, and yet they're still going like pretty strong. I think it's been almost a year for both of them. Um, so I've. I find their case extremely interesting to study. I think I'm, I don't think it has anything to do with them having the fetish because, well, every small creator that comes along and makes like short form content has the fetish. Like it's very obvious, but they don't stick around. So I'm curious. I'm curious on Koi and Dio. My only thought is that they are just so creative and they're constantly coming up with new ideas that that's why they are they're still around because they're still just trying to come up with something new that they can do like some like something the community hasn't seen yet or just like their 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 mind is always just raising with what new video can I do which is always which is the content creator mindset like you can't you can't have the mindset you can't like think become a content creator without thinking what's next all the time yeah constantly planning ahead yeah, I like that. so then i guess what of avenues are available for monetizing content we have things like patreon only fans seems to be the probably the biggest thing for small time creators or amateur content um the newish DA thing with collection subscriptions that you brought up, Hans. Um, and I've seen 
Um, but Killer WC uses Discord with Patreon for benefits. So they're they're kind of linked together. So it seems like Discord might also be moving in that subscription based model in some ways. Yeah, you hit on the big ones. There's obviously, you know, the, I guess, original monetization model of, you know, one on one, um, like client to, uh, patron i guess i don't know business dealings where this commissions yeah i was adding way too many words to describe it it's just <laughs> one-on-one commissions you know and uh that was sort of the first model we saw for creatives very small scale you know and then as the community sort of grew we're seeing people try different things group funding approaches right some of the first early success stories of monetization we have are like uh dodo bird who made uh some very popular videos two of them uh through crowdfunding and uh did a lot to sort of interact with the people giving money and had a sort of uh pretty detailed system in terms of depending how much you gave in um you could get more out of it much like jr did i believe when he was trying to create uh a multi-girl shoot and if you gave in a lot more, you could have uh, oversight on scripts, I believe it was. Like mm-hmm. years and years back, this would have been. So we had those sort of, that trend, I guess, towards, you know, group monetization. And then obviously the next era of that is the things like the Patreons and the subscriptions and things um, like you listed. And then obviously there's always efforts like what Shadow and I are doing, you know, when you create a product and you put it up for sale, you know. Um, and anyone can sort of purchase that finished product. So uh, that's something we're trying now, and it's working really well for us. But uh, I think those are some of the highlights I can think of. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the, uh, yeah, basically nail on the head. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a model. I don't know if it, others have done it. Like, you probably know. You, you would know better since you know more about monetization. Something like the... I have the the name might be wrong. Uh, the the wedgie magazine that they have in yeah the, uh, the danger danger wedgie. That's what I was trying to think yes. of earlier. Yeah, that. I don't know if someone has some something similar, but it has like an interesting. I think at least discussing what like because I believe mm-hmm. there's like a bit of profit sharing there involved with the artist. I'm not too sure on the specifics, but I know it's a bit different. I think true or yeah. used to be different. I don't know if they changed the model to be honest. Yeah. I remember listening to that episode um, from Wedgie Talk, Hans, and there was there was a lot of very interesting um, info there about yeah a different and Shao way of doing brings it. up a good point too yeah certainly and Shao you bring up a good point because you know as these deals get more complex and we realize like we want to try new types of content. That's probably things we'll have to consider, and uh, we're going a sort of more stratospheric here, but the idea that if you are running for a magazine, for example, and Danger Widgers had great success with theirs um, and a number of, of you know subscribers on a monthly basis, do you share with the artists or if you have writers who are consistently adding to it, you know, and it's this big group project, how do you split those funds and the money you make or how much profit do you make how much just goes to the artists and things and there becomes this larger overhead potentially but maybe larger potential to gain revenue from it Um, and that goes for anything right if creators are to become more professional you know and start studios for content or i don't know content houses you know or or a bunch of writers get together and they're making content you have to figure out what splits look like and and things and it becomes far more complicated than the simple i will write you the story for ten dollars you know the end kind of thing <laughs> yeah uh, jr the that patreon the wedgie girls patreon is, is is i think it's a pretty interesting example of it is where i remember Bat way back in the day before it ever existed with the uh, uh, JR trying to get those multi-model shoots and everybody was super excited because we never had anything like that before specifically mm-hmm. for us um, and it flopped pretty pretty heavily um, mm-hmm. and I, I think that might I think a portion of it at least might have been because starting out so with such a grand big thing um, whereas <clears throat> now 
with his Patreon, you kind of just get that once in a while or pretty often um, sometimes. And it seems like he worked up to that. Um, and now it's it's just like it, it's just like second nature. It's, it just comes easily. Yeah, it's gotten easier, you know, once it starts happening and people can see the success others are able to model it and i mean he's gonna have a much easier time you know getting multiple models together mostly because he's working so closely with models and they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting and showing like this guy's not a creep you know you can work with him we make good exactly. money here you know so there's like the awareness around the fetish has to grow um and then interest in sort of making this content and, and it has to be sort of proven as a financial, you know, uh, viable, I don't know, fetish. And it's done that, like, clips for sale, even years back when, like, just uh, Wedgies started theirs. They were celebrating how they would be, like, one of the top 50 selling studios on clips for sale, you know, of all the fetishes or something. Or they'd have a clip that would make it into the top 50. And they were like, this is amazing. Look how great we're doing. So, I mean, we've proven, like, the the, hung the community's hungry for content and we'll pay for it. Sometimes we'll pay a lot, you know, and, and creators can make a lot. So certainly it's it's become easier in that way to uh, to see it and, and to, to know that success is possible. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think it's really no surprise that we've basically moved away from the clips for sale many vids model, essentially, um, where with that it was just like customs that people ordered specifically for themselves and then it would be put up on the sale maybe other people will buy it but we're gonna keep make we're just gonna keep making a bunch of content a bunch of videos for other people and throw it up maybe people will buy it um whereas now <clears throat> with these quote-unquote studios or amateur creators it's yeah it's it can be targeted to a specific interest but it seems much more conducive and easier to appeal to a much larger audience. So one thing that I'm especially curious about from you guys is piracy. It seems like it could potentially now become a major issue because money is in the picture. And so legal action could is seems like it's it's very easy to bring into the picture now because you you have money to be able to put towards it and protect your your intellectual property correct yeah i would argue it's always been important right uh, i mean long before i was monetizing i've had people stealing my work um some notable examples, like I've told you, you know, very briefly that story of Lucy and Daniela getting copy and pasted on DA. Um, and the only thing that was changed was the names to Fox and Stacy, right? Which I thought was <laughs> and, actually a good idea, those were better that's, names, that's actually, but, um, <laughs> and that was there for years. That was on DA for years until I finally convinced them to take it down, you know. And then, of course, of course, when money's involved, you know, you're you have a chance to lose that as well but i mean it's something we've seen for years and years on clips for sale lucky on lucky fish forums was dealing with that a lot a lot of people would be buying his clips and then you know sharing it around you know and this this mm -hmm. goes back to the eternal question of like oh but if i buy a dvd i'm free to do with it what i will right why can't i share it with someone you know um but obviously a creator can lose a lot of money potentially and there's so many and I'm sure we've all seen it many many clips you know from places on clips for sale in different studios um, that these videos get shared around and then they're just out there you know and that could be costing a studio sales and stuff so yeah the question becomes how do you deal with that I don't think there's an easy answer I know JR I think has to do a lot of uh outreach to to people and platforms to point out when content's been stolen to get it taken down um but that's certainly a lot of time and effort that especially independent creators uh probably aren't going to have and probably can't afford to be spending dealing with this you know and like if for example if shadow and i got screwed on aurora protocol knock on wood and somebody started 
I don't know, even trying to resell it themselves, you know, or something like that. Like that's that would be an issue, and we'd have to figure out how to deal with it. Hopefully, I didn't just put something into the world that I like. I'm gonna regret <laughs> mentioning. I gave so many evil ideas, but certainly it's it's always been an issue. And right. as we see all these different models, you know, the question is gonna be, yeah, how do we deal with it? And I mean, maybe one day if the the as the fetish gets more professional and more and more out there we'll be getting big giant lawsuits you know people trying to protect their copyright or whatever instead of just the very small scale stuff we've seen historically yeah and i you I, know I, the the box and stacy thing i keep forgetting about this but the the i i feel like that guy was just putting in the names of the the women that jr worked with in the past because yeah, yeah, yeah of course yeah, yeah, yeah the one most it. well-known fox and stacy yeah, yeah definitely 100 yeah. yeah but um I find, I find the um idea of lawsuits in the community very fucking funny yeah. um just yeah. just because i i like the idea of our fetish getting that big um that we would be going lost we would be doing lawsuits and i just it it, it brings it brings a lot of joy to my heart um but <laughs> one of the but um on but like whether we could do it at all it's really hard to do because a lot of the big uh, a, a lot of pe- a lot of uh, piraters of content well they're behind a screen like how are we supposed to find out who these people are and prosecute them at all or yeah. bring a lawsuit to them like it makes it it makes it really hard it could just be the same guy doing it over and over and over again um but you constantly see like some content creators being like warning this person is a scammer or warning this person stole my content or whatever other warning it is um they tend to get mass reported and suddenly they're gone or you know they just close up their entire page but whatever but whatever it may be um these people just keep showing up like they they keep popping up and that's because they know behind the screen they can't really be touched in any meaningful way um in, in more in more than one ways <laughs> um but, but real but realistically it's hard to it's hard to prosecute anybody who's really stealing content on the internet um unless you can unless you can somehow find out who this person is and way and be able to find out their name and be able to prosecute them but really hard to do that um you need somebody who's really invested um in this topic and really dedicated to finding these fuckers and you know it'll be the day where the police um are are, at, are actively looking for wedgie fan 123 Mm. Or whatever his name will be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the the deal is that like the money you're gonna spend on litigation for that is way more than what you've lost, quote unquote. Yeah. Quote unquote. <laughs> so true. So true. So true. That is I very just wanted fair. to add that this is a very personal opinion, so uh, mm-hmm. that might be a bit controversial. Um, That's very true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just a disclaimer. Uh, I I do understand where creators are coming from with this. Like, obviously, it's terrible having all this work that you've done, all all this dedication, both time, effort, and even money put into this, only to have like someone re-upload it for free. And like, I understand, I understand the frustration. Like, I empathize with that. However, like, I'm not sure how big of a deal piracy really is. Uh, and I mean this because, like. You might have heard about this. There was a study done by the European Commission uh, at some point in 2015 or something like that, where they try to like exactly do this. Like, what's the impact of piracy on digital sales? I think it was focused on movies and video games and that kind of like stuff. Obviously, not wedgie content specifically, but mm-hmm. the report uh, didn't find any evidence of displaced sales from piracy. Nice. Uh, in other words, meaning that like. It's this this false notion, or I guess this hypothetical idea of like, well, these people who pirated this content or got it for free, they were gonna buy my content, but because they got it for free, they didn't buy it. Like this logical conclusion that doesn't have like evidence supporting it, right? Like, mm-hmm. if this pirated content didn't exist, they might have not watched your content at all. Like, it doesn't mean they like they're oh, I'm not gonna buy it because I can get it for free. It might just be like I'm not gonna buy it anyways. So. 
Yeah. Like it, you can't like do this one to one correlation of like every every part that you is like one sale that I lost kind of deal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's I was there. They might be a portion of it, but like there's no like what's the number of like there's no percentage of uh, that can be uh, linked to like oh ten percent of the views are lost sales. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's mm-hmm. no evidence for it yet. Good insight. For yeah, sure. that's, that's really interesting. And in, in some ways, it's sort of this kind of free advertising. Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> it could reach it's people the, uh, that haven't it's, heard of yeah. it before. It's, it's the same logic uh, Mr. Beast has when like people come, come up to him and are like, oh my gosh, these people are like taking clips of your videos and uploading them as shorts, like, and they're stealing your content. And Mr. Beast is like, yeah, but they're reaching a new, they're giving, they're okay. spreading my name around. They're giving me more of an audience than I would have had. Because they're gonna get because they're gonna come back to my content, right? Yeah. And it's fascinating. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. fast. It's definitely a fascinating philosophy. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so clear. I'm not advocating for piracy of what you want. <laughs> just yeah, neither, none of us are. None of us are. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, I'm not sure how how big of a deal it is in terms of like how much it's actually affecting creators negatively or positively. We don't yeah. have the evidence or the numbers for mm. it. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I, it, yeah. it might not. Anecdotally, uh, an- anecdotally, people mass report um, people who are selling um, yeah. who are selling other people's content, and they tend to go away for a little bit. So, I guess so far that's the method we got, and it's working. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it seems like the community does support the creators on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, absolutely. Um, sure. And it, I wonder if it might it might not necessarily financially hurt people so much as it's just sad to see someone just upright stealing your content that you put so much work into um like because this this community is not very big overall like you have like mr beast will reach millions and millions of people and i don't think we'll ever get there um and some people would say we shouldn't but um I think because of the sort of disparity between sort of vanilla content, if you will, uh, versus our arena, um, just the, because of the, the disparity in size of audience, um, you can sort of offset the the loss in some ways, if there is one, um, with a larger audience, because you'll just you'll have more people getting your content as opposed to a smaller amount. I, and I wonder if starting with having a community like we did before moving into monetization uh, has made it easier for people to protect their work since others care to some degree about the actual creators rather than businesses being on their own and having to deal with everything. I think it's easier if everyone knows everyone, you know, so then it's clear who made something. I mean, uh, probably your average consumer who isn't super active on places like DA or knows the deep back catalogs of a lot of writers won't notice if someone comes out who's new and says, look at the story I wrote and uh, tries reselling, you know, old stories. Because we don't have a great, you know, idea of, of... I guess, like, the whole history of the community, you know? We don't have good, I guess, oversight of IPs and and copyrights, you know, in general. So it's not hard for people to steal content. And online, where there's so much content, it's very easy. And, I mean, if you go on anywhere, like a Wattpad or something, you know, um, you'll see the number of uh, people who've made covers for their stories that's just stolen art pieces that they didn't make, you know. And I mean, there the the stakes aren't as high because they're not monetizing this content. But what if they were trying to, you know, or things mm-hmm. like that? And so if there were some way to monitor this that were easier, but I, I suppose that's true across any, you know, digital sales for any industry ever. You know, there's, there's going to be instances where people are able to take your stuff and share it and... The hope is, you know, people will notice that and call it out and shut it down. But a lot of times they probably just won't know. Like if they knew, they'd probably care, but they probably just don't know that it's not yours, you know. So that's that's an issue for sure. 
Yeah, and I think of um, the, the time before when you were posting Lucy and Daniela places and people didn't think it was you. Yeah, exactly. They didn't think they are posted on DA. They're like, you're stealing the story. I'm literally the writer, you know, like, and how do you tell that to people? So, like, that's the other side of it, you know, that's how poor sort of the knowledge is of the community and, um, and how difficult it can be to just, like, you know, get content out there and build an audience with, well, at the same time, you know, anyone could be taking your stuff and putting it somewhere else, I guess, to be kind of scary and kind of, kind of put the fear in all of us i guess unfortunately <laughs> yeah I, I wonder if there's easier content to protect in some ways like i guess identifiable content like this podcast uh where you can easily recognize my voice or your guys voices or videos <laughs> that like you can very clearly tell who is actually doing it because you have a face to the name or a voice to the name or whatnot so yeah i mean even that you know if people really wanted to they can just cut your intro out of your podcast you know and be like i made this i made this listen to me talk all these people you know like i'm like that's the thing i guess there's always going to be a way unfortunately or they say no i'm the fatora and i made this podcast i'm the best you know it's like (laughs) you're not me yeah but i feel like it's easy it's so easy to prove with that because i can just put out something that's like where i say hey this is it's not me you can clearly tell it's not me because I'm putting this brand new thing out that sure. they have no control yeah. over. So, yeah, Until... the challenge is if you don't see it, or or you know if you leave, right. you know, like that's what happened with Bloom, right? We've had people come in. I'm Bloom yeah. too. I lost yes. my account. I'm here, and I'm and I have I stole all our art. It's like no, you're not. You're not a person. But yeah, and I'm posting random dancing gifts. Like, and all things. right, draw some art. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Post some art, yeah. But I mean, yeah, you're not gonna know people. that. Yeah. They're gonna get a lot of popularity, and maybe they could use that, you know, to to make money off of people and scam them, you know, mm-hmm. potentially. Yeah, I think your podcast is gonna be safe until they I train so. uh, AI model that can replicate your voice <laughs> and deepfake uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. True. Then you're screwed. Yeah. yeah. Well, then yeah. I'm still gonna do it anyway, but you know, whatever. Nice. Um, and I think uh, there is ever new if if there is ever new Bloom art, just be wary. It's probably AI generated. Yeah. Hey. That too. Yeah. yeah. As sad as it is, as it is, we 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 do miss you, Bloom. We miss you. <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, really, I think in general, it's just I think it's just a wonderful thing that creators are getting finally getting paid for their work, since we've had so many really talented individuals who've been posting their content for free for so long, and mm-hmm. like the Wedgie Girls Patreon and between two, like they're super successful. Um, so clearly people want it there's like there's there's a good market for it and it's it's just fantastic to see you you know i'm actually really curious because i know i know hans and shadow were on the old um lucky fetish forums along with noof um and i know hans is also the encyclopedia of the entire <laughs> wedgie community's history so i'm curious what like were there attempts to monetize like way back in the day like pre 2016 even like were there attempts to really try and monetize like um well i know art was probably monetizable but stories like videos was there any like real attempts at that uh certainly very limited um i think we could look to maybe some of the bigger names like the sasitas um could have done commissions and things around that time but yeah the, the monetizing especially not of videos but of stories in particular is, is a more recent occurrence i would say more was it 2018 or something something yeah. like that yeah it feels think... right yeah back in the forums it was only the big names who had like a shot of like well someone's gonna commission them like, yeah not... exactly right. it wasn't a thing where like any author could aspire to do it yeah and yeah it, it didn't really happen on lucky fetish either. like there really wasn't any no. sort of legitimate monetization on lucky fetish it kind of all happened no. elsewhere for sure and I think that sort of makes sense given the nature of the fact that it's a, it's a forum and it's sort of we're just kind of here as a community as opposed to it's a bunch of creators Correct. and 
businesses uh, trying to sell things. So in some ways, yeah. it's it's nice that way, but it's it's I think it's overall it's it's a better thing that people are getting paid for their work, and I think it helps prevent burnout. Um, once people want to stay longer and all that, so I don't know if you guys can what, hear my stomach uh, rumbling. Ah, uh, thought I didn't hear it. <laughs> okay, okay, good. I was gonna add that like I think one of the things that helped out these creators as well was that it seemed that as they monetize, they manage to preserve this sense of community with them. So, yeah. like you said, like obviously in the forums, like with this atmosphere, it was hard to like try to monetize. Like it, it was more of a we're doing this for for free kind of thing. But uh, like the the risk would have been, of course, that if you go if you do like the monetization route, you're just gonna you know become a business, right? And mm -hmm. like a business is just. You do the content, they buy it, and that's it. Like, there's no community, but like, that was certainly not the case. That's not what happened at all with these communities that form around the businesses. Yeah. The different mm -hmm. ventures that there are in the community. Yeah. Sort of build that audience before you even start thinking about it, really. I mean, I think I think that's actually a necessity because imagine how bold you got to be to just. <laughs> waltz in to the wedgie community and be like yo i'm making stories 10 bucks each let's do bucks. it 50 like, bucks you, you gotta have, yeah like you gotta have some balls of steel to do that <laughs> or some yeah. killer stories that you have like Better. a preview or something <laughs> be good yeah yeah right imagine no preview nothing 50 bucks a story or some like exuberant price i, I kick it up to that because we know you could never charge for that much for a story you know like potentially nobody would I, pay I mean unless it's called aurora protocol yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, <laughs> yeah i'm not insane <laughs> i feel i this is purely my own opinion i feel like uh Anti Cherry might be the only person who could have done that, honestly. <laughs> yeah, Coming maybe back, you know, in 2015 or something, if he'd done it. Nowadays, I wonder, you know, like he'd have the nostalgia factor, which some writers would have. Uh, but, I mean, new readers and stuff would be like, who's this? Why am I paying for your, your stories? You know, you to prove yourself, kind of. Right. And I wonder, you know, like how much of that maybe goes into some of it. And, I mean, anti cherry could charge anti cherry could charge fifty bucks to make another entire list of wedgies. Yeah, that's true. That is one of the most popular pieces on DA history. You know, so he, you want you want to find you want you want to find more you want you want to use more wedgies in your story. Well, don't worry, pay fifty bucks. And I'll give you some great ideas. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and you joke about it, but he could totally pull like a Kickstarter or something like that. Yeah, that's they true. That's yeah. true. You know. Yeah. And I like I've wondered about trying to monetize more unusual things like we talk about. Yeah, like a list of content, you know, like something that like gives you insights, you know, like I don't know if there's any value in people knowing like uh, how much people would be willing to spend on a story, you know, like if you were to gather that data, almost like a research firm does nowadays, you know, and delivers consumer insights. And it's like and here's everything you need to know about selling content successfully would people want to buy that you know would you be able to like make money off of that like how to make money in the wedgie community i think could you, you would. sell that and i could probably you know? i could probably think of a i could probably think of a couple things that would be extremely popular and would probably sell at least a few in the community um i, I think the best way to go about that would just be to look at da statistics and be like all right which stories are getting the most views which stories have the most likes um, what's is there a trend between all of these? Um, like, yeah. if you look at all that, if you look at all that, you could probably come up with like, yeah, th there is a, like, there is a story that I like a one shot story that would definitely sell, and I'm gonna write it and sell it. Then you yeah, could probably yeah. go. On. You could probably go and do exactly that. You could, and that's time and effort, you know? So if someone delivered all those insights to you, say, here's, pay me five bucks, I'll give you this whole report, and gives you trends, and it gives you info on what stories were big, and what's the biggest stories, and who's got this audience, and blah, blah. And, like, if they, and then you're like, wow, now I know exactly all I need to know, um, and I understand all this stuff. Like, if you're really serious about being a creator, you want to make a lot of money, maybe... 
you would pay for that, you know? So I don't know. That's not something anyone's ever tried to do. I mean, but there's been promised, you know, ADA that we've heard about we were going to get. Um, like Indoor Stereo said yeah. they were going to do a super deep dive right into DA looking across so much wedgie content for like, I don't know, a decade or something super insane. Like yeah, I would have probably would have paid five bucks to get access to that and see super stats and data and really learned about the community. Like if you're interested in the history of it and, and trends over time and stuff as I am, you know, uh, there's a lot of value in that sort of stuff. And if you're doing a lot of work to get it um, and gather it, why not charge for some of it? I mean, it's, it's, it's always that thing, you know, I always bring up of like, but are people going to pay if it doesn't turn them on? If it's not like a, um, like what value is there in, you know, history of the community and right. things, if it's not driving a sexual purpose. But I think there's some value in it anecdotally. I don't know. No one else might agree, but uh, things like that I'm I'm just curious about. And we haven't yeah. seen them monetized, but I wonder if that's maybe a, a next step in some time in the future, you know. Yeah. You know, Hans, I got a great uh, way to test that. Um, you could probably make like a essentially a documentary type story, um, mm -hmm. documenting like, let's just say Anti Cherry, because that's probably the best person to do a document to write a documentary on. Um, and if that and if that actually um, is like you know pretty popular, um, you could prob you could probably try doing essentially a documentary on the entire community. It'd yeah. be fun, you know, because just people would be easy to chat to with, you know, like if you get JR on camera, you know, you could produce a documentary and it doesn't need to be super long because but it's, it would take time and then you probably charge, you know, and make a little movie, mm -hmm. you know, about the right. community. And yeah, history. I mean, and, and that's something, again, you probably charge for, you know, I, I think you uh, could something you could crowdfund, actually. That, yeah, that, I love that, that documentary. I love that. That's a yeah. great idea. Yeah, yeah. this I'm, is great. I mean, it's sort of I, I sort of see all this this content as sort of educational in some ways for sure um, and i mean you look oh. at college university all of it, especially in america and people pay out the ass for it so there's <laughs> it, knowledge is invaluable and it's i think it's just a matter of finding the audience for it mm. yeah I, I would like to add a another idea i just had of something that has potential to be monetized but hasn't, well, as far as I've seen, hasn't been monetized yet, is having editors, like, do editor work in terms yeah. of stories. Great because point. I've seen there's a demand for that, obviously, from writers, not from, like, your regular readers. But, like, writers, I think, are, like, they have potential of having someone check on their work and giving them feedback and that kind of editorial side of yeah. things. It's, like, they might, there might be some business to it perhaps yeah and i may or may not have gotten offers from i may or may not have gotten offers from people to finish hana and sarah for me and i was like <laughs> yeah. I, wow. I was like gosh i was like gosh dang it as much as i want to see this thing finished i can't just hand it off to somebody else that's my baby mm. yeah i didn't mean another writer i just mean like the you do the <laughs> let's say next chapter of hana and sarah and like instead of going through the whole you know, proofreading and all that, you give it to someone else, they give you back the feedback of, oh, here's all the proofreading and here's yeah. some suggestions and then you can, like, yeah, they, take they the like, suggestions or not. Such they catch all those grammar right. mistakes that I never that I never remember to fix. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I could improve your work, but I would, I would definitely argue, you know, editors have been this kind of underpaid, undervalued aspect of writing in the community anyway. I mean, I know I've done oh, yes. a number of editing for free, <laughs> And I've had people at my work for free. Now that I think about it, I was like, now I'm thinking about it. I should have paid them something, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's certainly this, this undervalued, underpaid, and probably unpaid, you know, um, aspect of writing. And I think, Shadow, you're a million percent right. That's something that can certainly change and isn't talked about. Yeah, yeah, that's... I, I just wonder how many people are actually just sort of editing for free around the around the, the community i'm sure there's plenty how many writers yeah. are actually proofreading their work before they post it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's true yeah. yeah exactly that's that's a hurdle you know around editing i mean if we see it as as any sort of monetization aspect if we see it as unnecessary you know we're not gonna be like oh well we now i need to hire someone to and then pay them to do it you know and i'm just doing this for fun you know that sort of writerly approach to it in a lot of cases 
But um, yeah, if you want to put out better content, especially if you want to monetize, right? You probably want to put that effort in, make sure it's very clean, as clean as it can be, you know? Um, and if someone's doing this work, they deserve to be paid, you know? So, For sure. um, But it makes it a lot more work. And, and generally speaking, I don't think a lot of people in the community are interested in putting that work in mm -hmm. uh, just because they're here for fun, you know, and, and uh, I might be wrong on that, but um, to take those steps and to really put that work in, uh, I think it, it goes above and beyond for what a lot of people are looking for in this community. For sure. And Hey, above and beyond could be monetizable. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you really want to set yourself apart, like set the standard high for yourself. Or for others, sure. Um, yeah, I, I set the standard because I edit my work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said that baseline, you know, it's, and that's, we need to start from yeah. somewhere, certainly. And it, it, it can very easily, depending on, I guess, we, would, we I don't think there really is any history of paid editing work. So, um, uh, that thought got away from me, but uh, whatever. <sighs> What are the pros and cons for monetization? I think we all know the obvious pro. Money, money, <laughs> money, money. Show <laughs> incentive. Um, I mean, it's a pretty big. It's a pretty big incentive. Um, yeah. incentive to monetize. Yes. Also, it's also a self-esteem boost, right? Like, imagine thinking like someone paid for my work. Like, that's kind of mm. like a yeah. Yes, gives you that maybe sweet, at the beginning dopamine yes indeed yeah it's extremely validating yeah uh, that's that's for sure absolutely it's yeah that's one of the more underlying things but it's absolutely there all the same it could also be just like self-fulfilling right it's like thinking thinking like you find i finally got to this point mm -hmm. in my yeah. in my hobby that i can actually monetize it like that's got to be huge. Like it, yeah. Like you get that good old ah uh, sigh. Like after you finally like start selling it, it's like I'm di I did it, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, certainly, yeah. And it has some some power that like just checking views or favorites might not have. Or it's like, well, I have this many views or this many favorites, but you know, people favor us. That, that's worth like way more than that. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, a favorite may be worth a thousand likes, but a dollar is worth a thousand favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I'll take that math, I guess. I, and yeah, just yeah, I, I like that expression. Yeah, yeah that's good. Appropriating that expression for the community. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's one. I I don't I don't. This is I'm not fully sure of how to articulate this, but I'll try. I wonder if the, at one con for it might be affecting like negatively affecting the um perhaps the motivation to put out free content because you see all these people oh, they're, they're making all this there are oh, so many other people already making all this money uh, and they're already sort of filling these areas that i want to go into um so what's the point of me doing this? I can just get what I want from somewhere else. Right. You I know, that's a, a, go, go ahead. That's a valid point. Yeah. Uh, Shadow, you can go. Oh, sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, sorry. It was, um, I was just going to say, like, I guess it's a matter of perspective, right? Like, we right. were talking a bit earlier about financial incentives, which could mean, like, what what are you doing when you charge people for content? Like, are you providing value to them, right. or are you trying to subtract free content from them in a way to like force them to buy? I know it sounds very forced the way I'm, I'm putting it, but in a way, that's what you're thinking, right? Like, if I'm gonna sell this thing, then it by consequence it doesn't like it shouldn't be available for free. Right. Some might think, and that's not the only way of monetizing, but like that's the kind of financial incentive that gets in the way of sharing content in the community. Right. Yeah, I mean, it seemed, as far as I can see, it seemed uh, free content seems to be sort of an integral aspect of this community, something that sort of sets us apart from 
so many other arenas. Um, which is sort of a double-edged sword. Absolutely. If I have, I have to be honest, because then you get a lot of a lot of complainers yes. being like, "Why isn't this free?" or like, "Give me <laughs> right. some free stuff," which is a lot. Which is another thing. Um, smaller content creators have to just deal with over and over and over again. It's like, can you make this video? Sure. This this is how much it'll cost. Wait, what, I, why do I have to pay for it? It should just be free. And it's, right. you know. Yeah, fun stuff for all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you can sort of alienate some audience members or lose it because either people don't want to pay for it or they just don't have the money to pay for it. So you could lose people that way. Yeah, and in that way, you're also, quote unquote, competing with people who are doing free content. Yeah. It's like, if I'm going to charge for this, it's got to be at least as good, if not better, than this mm -hmm. content that's coming out for free. And, like, you know, mm -hmm. I can't. Like, yeah. I can't outvalue something that's already free, right? <laughs> Potentially. Yeah, yeah. Really. I mean, so true. I, I, think yeah. you, I think you can very easily looking at some of these, some of the, the stuff that's been put right. out in the right, industry. Right. But yeah, like most absolutely. of it is like that, but there are some quality yes. free yes. content. So. For sure. Yes, like, like uh, your guys' first two novels that you should have been monetizing from the get go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's the fear right will people right. see those and say oh why would i pay for a third one like i have these two like i get off on them you know to to be blunt like why should i need a third you know um and that's that's the fear you know especially with so much free content out there will people pay when they have their favorites and they have the things they like, you know, and they have their, you know, stolen videos. Like, why make anything new? It could be the fear question you ask. But, I mean, people are always hungry for new content, as we know, you know, and they're willing to pay for it. So there's no reason not to try. If you have a cool idea and you're willing to put work into it and make it worth people's money, you know, people will buy it. For sure. Absolutely. Are there any others you guys can think of? Any pros or cons? Maybe the con is almost alienating your own audience uh, in the sense that now you that you're suddenly charging content, there's an there is a big exp ex uh, expectation because um, internet historian put it um, very great to this idea: um, prices set expectations. Yes. So right. if you if you're under if we ever have a content creator that comes in like you know they make it they make it pretty big on their free content and they start monetizing that content and that content is very shoddily put together it's very cash grabby it could completely alienate hit like that content creator's entire audience and it could almost fuck with the perception of monetizing in this community yeah, well, hopefully people see that for what it really is. It's just cash. Yeah, like, hope, hopefully, like, we need, like, a, we just need one really terrible uh, uh, monetization effort to really screw, really screw with us where we are right now, because we've had some successes, but we need, like, one big push like right. something that's like almost entire community defining to come to come out and that'll cement the idea of monetize of monetizing um stories and stuff but if we got somebody who comes in and completely ruins the the idea immediately like may just kill may just kill that idea because that's because people will think oh monetize monetizing stories just like that guy Nah. Yeah, I, I I like that quite a bit. Like you have these couple of major creators in the community, but there's not really one that's sort of making it feel uh, accessible to everyone. It's sort of like, well, just be like they're doing it, but that that's because they're so big. They're like they're such a huge mm. name, or they have such a large audience, or like they have all these resources. Like there's not really one that's sort of had that major impact on the community like wow this is so this is doable for me yes 
Yeah. I mean, you could look at, like, a Between Two Cheeks, maybe, and say, like, they started, you know, from nothing, and it wasn't super yeah. long before they were monetizing, you know, and, and they were following the patterns that people had already set, you know, starting with that 2D art style, whose name I just forgot. Isekai. Um, Isekai, thank you. They start with that, you know, and then you write some stories that are very cartoony, but nothing we hadn't sort of seen before in some ways. Um, and then you keep growing from there and you expand your brand, right? And you think about it like a brand, you know? So from nothing, they weren't someone who'd been around for many years, like a Sacito who got into it, you know, with novels and that approach, or Shadow and I, for example, who aren't the biggest names in the community, but certainly have larger audiences than, than some smaller creators just starting out. But yeah, if you look at like a Between Two Cheeks, may take inspiration from him starting from nothing and uh finding some characters that really resonated um and building that out in every way possible right i like if he really wanted to keep building it i literally could have seen him selling you know consumer products like plush of the characters yeah, and stuff you know absolutely. people probably could have bought that you know because it really was a brand and that's how i yes. think about it and that's how i describe it, it one of the most successful the community's ever seen by far you know he could have just kept building it i mean uh, could have put them into more games like he'd done and things stuff we've no one's done like not even the biggest names in the community are the most well-known writers you know yeah. uh it's incredibly impressive in the small what two years or something right that uh he was sort of around um very impressive growth so you can do it homegrown you know local is community only starting from the scratch um uh, but you have to take it very seriously you have to put in a lot of work um and you really have to to build a lot so um yeah i guess i'll just end on that yeah i mean it's really uh as as someone famous once said started from the bottom now we're here exactly right <laughs> yeah canadian yeah. too <laughs> so the uh, I'm, will monetization ever overtake or replace free content Mm, this community it's going to take a while for that to happen that's fair i could see yeah. it i could see it getting to a place but it's going to be when i'm retired <laughs> well hopefully wow, by that point hopefully. we have pension plans hey, yeah bad, bad, so we can just spend all of our 401k on wedgie content <laughs> well i mean pension like legitimate business like you have a 401k or a pension for the stuff you've done in this community so you can Imagine retire that. off of that yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the goal God damn. yeah shadow we need to start a whole library of books to make that much money for our retirement what? we need a whole library of books we need like 50 novels out there to, to oh. bring us revenue you know incrementally oh yeah yeah you know something I didn't think. Oh, about. Grandpa, would you would you do for your life? Well, I wrote wedgie books until I could retire. <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah, I mean, the that, dream. Yeah, hey, if that you're, is a dream right there. <laughs> if you're able to retire off of that work, I think that's something you should be able to be to say proudly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that's like I don't know how close it can get to like working on what what you're passionate about because like that's not a thing you you're going to apply to it anywhere like it's not a job <laughs> application you can get I, you're you're a writer that's what you, you don't have you don't yeah, have to say like, specifically, I think we're wedgie. specifically wedgie writing right yeah. but you don't have to put specifics you can just put i've been writing for this, for this. Oh, right. oh, that's 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 fair yeah uh something that we brushed upon is longevity and looking at the long term. Um, and this might be a bit too dry of a topic for most people of uh, how to use your money wisely. Um, I guess <laughs> I'll just do a brief thing of it. Like One thing that I do recommend people do is invest their money once they, uh, once they start getting a little bit. Because it really doesn't take, you don't, like, that's kind of a percent, like, a perception that people have for some reason about investing is like it's you need a lot of money to be able to do it but there's all kinds of tools you can do like you could start really small like five ten bucks like something super and you just build something over time like really the only thing you need for investing is time so 
So uh, if you if you really <laughs> yes. you really honestly no, you don't really need much money at all. Like for the big things, yeah, you need a, a good bit of capital and overhead. But if you're doing like things like Robin Hood or um, oh, uh, Acorn, Acorn, like there are things like that. There are things like that that you can that you, tools that you yeah. can use to start really small and build up. Like people that I know have have gone with those routes and they've had some decent success and then they just weren't able to continue with it. So, um, but yeah, if you guys, if if anybody is looking for longevity, that's absolutely a way to go. Um, if you were able to put aside the time for it. And I like years, I'm you talking also like invest decades. On... Um, J- JR um, is one of the biggest examples of, of investing because almost all of the money that he makes on his Patreon, like he has, he has his cut, Cody has her cut, and then they basically spend the entire rest on just making content. Um, yeah. it like they got to pay, they got to pay all their models. They got to pay for the studio. Um, mm-hmm. if, if they need a, if they want a better camera, they got to invest in that. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot that goes into, um, making, um, uh, making that type of professional content and it's expensive. Very expensive. Yes. Yeah. 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 Huh? That's, that's the thing. That's the one thing when we talk about, you know, what to do with your money. I mean, a lot of it's going to be reinvested into the, the, the process of content creation you know and the bigger you get probably the more you're spending i mean i imagine between two cheeks was hopefully paying bloom quite a bit of money you know to funnel all that content into the patreon and things and it could have kept growing with more art that he was commissioning and things like that and uh i mean certainly shadow and i made some profit from aurora protocol but um that was after you know we we addressed the fact that we had a budget and we had to get make our money back first you know so um yeah definitely putting the content the money back into the content especially if it's something like a patreon you want to make sure you're spending it, uh that money on creating value and and making it sustainable you know so you keep delivering but uh sure. yeah it's 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 a challenge for sure yeah yeah i mean hans you brought up that JR's Patreon, his, his, both his Patreons uh, sort of collectively make 25000 per month. And like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of money, but so, so much of that, it, it's, it's all put back into it. So mm-hmm. you, so it's something to keep in mind is like, yeah, you can make that much, but you're probably, it's, Ex- that's the gross. It's not, or it's, yeah, it's the gross. It's not the net Dude. amount that you'll actually have at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. He makes That's just it. enough to pay taxes on wedgie content. Yeah. <laughs> when you get to that level of earning that much money, it's because you're spending that much money in the, yeah. the production value. For sure. Yeah. Yep. 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 So do you guys have any advice for anyone looking to monetize their own work? Make good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the obvious one. But it's make good wrong. stuff. And constantly have new ideas um, for like always keep thinking. If you want to monetize, you just got to keep thinking. What's the next thing I'm gonna do after I make this? Because that's the content creator mindset, and that's what's gonna get you far. Or how can I do it better? Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, and I just add, I guess, on in this line of you know the creator mindset of like don't be afraid to try it. You know, like if yeah. JCCW today was like, oh yeah, Han and Sarah commissions are open. Who's gonna pay me for it? I'll be the first one banging on that door. You know, but if it doesn't go well, uh, don't be too discouraged because th- it's very hard to make sales in general in this community um, unless you are, you know, like a JR making a lot of video content. Um, even people who do commissions, you know, they'll get a number of them, certainly. But I don't think anyone needs to have a very large business pipeline and uh, be super, you know, uh, overwhelmed or hire out other, you know, writers to help them manage stuff, you know. Like, uh, so so there's, like, issue things around scale, you know. you I don't think you're, especially overnight, going to be making hundreds and hundreds of dollars but if you try it you'll find you'll probably 
uh, get some sales and you can make a little bit of that money, you know, and also get some of that potentially validation like we mentioned, you know. But it's a very slow process. So And don't be afraid to just try it because um, eventually you'll have some success if you look at what the audiences want, you know, and uh, you try hard and you, you don't give up when it uh, gets hard or you're not getting sales for a little bit, for example. I would... I will split my advice into two two parts. First one, I think I already mentioned, uh, manage your expectations in terms of what are you looking for with the monetization. Because if your if your goal, like your long term goal, is to make this something sustainable, like you want to like have this as a full time job, it means you have to dedicate yourself to this as a full time venture. So, with all of that implies. So all of the time, all the work, all the effort, it's, just, it's not be wedgie related, but at the end of the day, it's still a business venture. And just like any other business venture, like there's risk involved and it's very likely that the business might fail. And even if it doesn't fail, if it's successful, it's going to require a lot of work, a lot of effort, maybe not capital if you're not investing capital into it, but definitely free labor. So it's all going to be exhausting and grinding, mm -hmm. but you can make it there. For and obviously, sure. if you're not doing this as a full-time venture, it's just a side gig or just a... It'd be nice to have a bonus money here now and there. Well, that depends on the expectation. And that's the amount of how much how much are you going to spend on this? And by spending, I mean your time, your effort, your work, any budget in case you're commissioning, etc. For sure. Great point. So then what does the future hold for monetization and especially free content? Gosh, man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the kind of thing you have to think about if you're looking at longevity. <laughs> I, mean, I predict yeah. we'll see a lot of it, a lot more of it. I mean, in the next, I'll say three years, we'll probably see a sharp uptick. Oh, I like throwing around numbers. So it's probably like 30% more content that's like monetized wow. um, compared to free content. We'll probably see a lot more creators trying it, you know, and a lot more being successful on it. It's been a slow journey for even some writers to try, and some only do it, as we've seen, as in one-off or two-off ventures, like even Sosita, who if anyone could have sort of a lasting, you know, subscription-based success off of it. Uh, he's only put out a couple novels that he's charged a little bit for, things like that. So I think we'll see more writers who are taking it seriously as a business venture who sort of have seen – you know, not wedgie community efforts and what goes on behind those. Like, I'm thinking, you know, when we mention Mr. Beast, you know, that's someone people know and they recognize, like, he puts in a lot to get that success and makes a ton of money, but it's because there's so much that goes into it. I think that sort of stuff filters into the consciousness, you know, of the community and, and people see, okay, if I want to make money out of this, I got to treat it like a business venture. And so I, I expect we'll see a lot more of it. And then certainly, yeah, that means less free content, but in a way that's certainly great because it means people are going to be making money for their work, you know, and, uh, and that's just better mm -hmm. all around, generally speaking. Absolutely, yeah. I'll think, I think we're going to see more, like, commissions are not going to go away anywhere, mm -hmm. but I think I'm, we're going to see in the future less like less of the content that's monetized coming from commissions and more going into subscriptions and subscription-based models. Uh, nice. I don't know how this would look like for writing, but I think that's the trend that's going to keep growing. Like nice. it's not going to be like the super popular in the near future, but it's going to be steadily growing. I think that's my prediction. Hmm. I think that's an awesome prediction. Love that. Very nice. Like I said, commissions are not going away and free yes. content either. It's just like in the, yeah. if you're imagining this like pie chart, like the slice that corresponds to like subscription based writing is going to be bigger than it is right now. I'd second that 100%. No, no doubt. Shell's right. Yeah. So I, I guess it's uh, just excited to see what, what the future holds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hopefully we get uh, some. 
we we get that uh that sort of creator that makes it accessible for everybody that's that's because then i think that would make the explosion happen of yeah this is absolutely possible yeah i don't think it'll be an explosion to to shadow's point and, right. and uh, what we were saying you know i think it's going to be a slow it's been slow going for monetization in the community because in some ways there's a lot of complexity around it you know it's it's easy to just write something and put it out there but to figure out you know models and stuff even if you don't understand those terms or think about it like that um and i know i wouldn't have back even 2015 but to understand you know that there's a business behind it and things it's it's going to be a slow process but i think 100 percent as shall said over time we're going to look at those big success stories like that are subscription based that we can clearly see there's demand and success there and we're going to see a lot more of those for sure but it's going to be slow next couple of years we'll see more and more of them but certainly you know the watt pads of the world da's even lucky fish forums and it's sort of hobbling along state you know we're going to see free content on uh, on all those continue yeah wow is there anything else that any of you would like to discuss I don't got anything left uh, to share. Oh. Right, no, that was great. The financials. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> great stuff. Was well, there anything that any of you would like to promote from yourself or others? Aurora Protocol. <laughs> oh, thank you, JCCW. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. If you're interested in these topics and knowing more about the wedgie community and stories, I recommend this podcast, The Best Book Club. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. might have heard of it. Club. <laughs> best Book Club. Might have heard the of it after listening to the stories. full episode. <laughs> it's just for the dedicated fans. Yeah. The best Book Club. The best a wedgie fascist can get. <laughs> I hope it's not the best. <laughs> it's in the title. It says the best. It says the best yeah. book club. Yeah, it's best. That's the goal, <laughs> but advertisement? it's the goal, but it's not. I hope it's not the. I hope it's not. A, I'm, I haven't already reached it because I'd be disappointed. <laughs> you see that that that's actually what we're getting to in this podcast. We're gonna eventually get to the best one. Yeah, we're just, we're just, we're just finding our way. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you all so much for coming on. This was great. Thanks for having us on. Such a great conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. And a very important one, I think, as we're getting more into this area. So if there's anything that you'd like to hear me discuss, or if you'd like to come on for an episode, leave a comment or send me a message on DeviantArt or Lucky Fetish as Neil Thora. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode of The Best Book Club. Mm-hmm.